Hello everyone and welcome back to Disc Golf Examiner. Today we have a special broadcast for you as we're on the Seton Hill University campus in Greensburg, PA to display a concept course essentially, a course that has just been approved. Uh, I'm Brian Keegan, your host, joined today by Andrew Greenslade, who is also not only a disc golfer, but Seton Hill uh, track coach. Andrew, how's it going? How you doing, Brian? I'm doing good. I'm so glad to be out here because I have been a resident of Greensburg my entire life, and I'm so excited to actually see an 18-hole disc golf course in my neck of the woods. And this one's a par 61, over 7,000 feet, and uh, within walking distance of downtown Greensburg. Uh, and like I said, it's the first 18-hole course in the county. Super excited about this, Andrew. Yeah, this is a, a big development for us. We've, uh, I've always called Westmoreland County the black hole of disc golf in an otherwise uh, disc golf rich region around Pittsburgh. So uh, we're really excited uh, to have this project finally moving in a direction of bringing an 18 hole course to Westmoreland County. Uh, one of the best parts about this is it's a student led project by Hunter Miller, one of the uh, course designers that you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, but he went to administration and got the approval to move forward and he reached out to the local disc golf community and we've had a good uh, response basically with a small group of us really working to get an initial layout and then do some fine tuning and finally get to this point where we're playing basically a rough draft and getting a look at what the course might look like being played. And of course we got to bring in some pros to play. We got Mitchell Short. Vinny Montaneri, Tom Snake Sears, and Nasty Nate Langer. Some very far throwers here, great players. Let's start things off on hole number one. It's a par three, 297 feet. You have to play around these trees and uh, the basket here in the middle of the field. Yeah, we really wanted to bring two options into play here at about 300 feet downhill. Um, you can either go up the tunnel, which is what you're going to see me do here. I'm throwing a, a mid-range. I'm just going to try and go low and straight. Uh, but there's also a wide hyzer option out over a retaining pond that plays as out of bounds. Yeah, and I think the real challenge here is uh, just really getting past those first trees. Uh, for a lefty like Vinny, uh, he's going to have to play this sidearm. Yeah, now Vinny has a sidearm that rivals most people's backhands, but he's taking that wide hyzer route out around the trees and just trying to dump it right into that long grass, basically. Yeah, Vinny is one of the furthest throwers I have ever seen in my life. Um, Nate is <laughs> one of the next ones up. Unfortunately, he's going to clip a tree and go into a little brush there. And uh, we don't, you know, obviously the brush isn't cleared out much. Um, and... We have, a, we have a really tough situation back there once you get into the rough. Absolutely. And even Mitch found the opposite uh, tough situation where he didn't play as high of a hyzer, and he's going to be out of bounds in that fenced-off retaining pond. And Hunter going to saw his off a little short there. He'll be in the brush. And I believe th this is Chris. This is uh, Hunter's friend who is new to, newer to disc golf. Uh, he, he's been playing a little while. And uh, so we'll see, get a good mix of people here to see how they play it and how beginners get kind of a uh, feel for the, for the course. Absolutely. A big part of this course design uh, was supposed to be student centered. So we not only wanted to show how uh, maybe open level players would play this course, but if you just had students on campus who wanted to grab a couple of discs or frisbees on a weekend and go out and use the facility, how they could uh, potentially utilize it. And Nate finding the edge of the brush there, able to kind of sneak out there and you get a good run up towards the basket. He'll have a putt from there. I'll do it. Yeah, Nate all summer has been uh, impressing me with that little flex forehand um, that he's been developing. Now this is Hunter, our, our student. Um, that got the whole project running. He's also a kicker on the football team. Roll away, roll away. 
and get a little bit of <laughs> right there. And this is Chris's first attempt at a forehand, which turned into the best forehand roller he could have possibly asked for. <laughs> and Mitch getting a good run at it. And Andrew. My mid -range. Yeah, my mid-range brought me up just probably just outside the circle. That low ceiling is uh, tough to get the distance. The little left side, that's all. Nate getting a three, <laughs> getting his par. <laughs> and Vinny tapping in a two, getting the first birdie on the course ever. Yeah, he was pretty uh, He was pretty proud of that fact that he's the first birdie on the Seton Hill Disc Golf Course. <laughs> Hunter gave it a good bid, but you know, it without these, you know, being properly installed, you definitely have some lean of the chains and things like that right now. Um, of course, these are just temporary baskets. We we are, uh, I believe, ordering some some very nice Prodigy baskets uh, for the course. So, yes, that was in our proposal was the Prodigy baskets. But a big shout out to the uh, the crew of football players that uh, Hunter brought out with him that moved baskets out ahead of us as we were playing, um, did some catch cam filming, uh, and basically just helped us put this whole production together. And hole two is a par three. It's 259 feet. You have to play around the fence. So if you're righty backhand, you got to go Anheuser up the hill. If you're a left-hand backhand, uh, like Vinny is here, this is your bread and butter. Yeah, we really tucked that tee up there. Uh, our thought process as we moved through some different ideas was we didn't want people going over the pond um, because we really want to take this pond out of play so that if uh, people are losing their discs into that retaining pool, they're not climbing the fence since it has no trespassing signs on it. Nate picking a big Anheuser there. Yeah, and really... It really forces either the big high turnover with a putter or a mid-range or maybe even a fairway driver or um, a big spike forehand just because of the trees immediately on your right. And Mitch playing that very nice. It could go, oh, great. He'll be putting from there. And Chris here is going to throw out into the field here as the righty backhand. He is newer at that. Uh, I saw you giving him some tips, Andrew, and the second that you did, he was, he was getting a lot more distance. Yeah, the uh, the coach in me starts coming out. I can't help it sometimes. But, <laughs> um, yeah, we just started giving him some tips on the reaching back and started getting a little more distance on that. Uh, I believe that's a champion Mako 3. He throws a lot. And here is Nate for his birdie. Wow. Pretty good bid. This will be for Hunter's birdie. Still a little bit out of range there for putting. And Mitch. Oh, just a hair low. Right in that nice, soft, temporary basket we've got. <laughs> oh, no, Andrew. Yeah, I would like to claim that my score should be one stroke higher. Um, as my putter went straight through the chains yeah. on this temporary basket. <laughs> yeah, the, the uh, cloth ones don't catch as well as the good ones. No, but I know our uh, I know our football players were appreciating the fact that uh, this was one of the two baskets, uh, just because of how much lighter it was compared yeah. to the metal one. And Vinny grabbing another birdie, making this seem a lot easier than it is. <laughs> Yeah, Vinny, uh, Vinny decided this was a lefty-friendly course and uh, just started attacking. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to hole three, which is a par three. It's 242 feet, plays across the hill. Uh, the hill slants right to left, so uh, the right-hand backhand player is really going to have to put some ante on this to get the distance uh, to the basket there. Yeah, it plays pr the camera doesn't quite pick up on how uphill this shot is, but it's fairly open otherwise. 
Um, so most players are just going to be throwing big hyzers at this, uh, especially our open players, as you can see Vinny doing here with, I believe, an eagle <laughs> and actually coming up short. I'm throwing a leopard, and this is the risk of I expected it to turn, and but because of the uphill throw, it didn't. So I'm about 45 feet pin high, uh, but it's definitely a long putt, longer than you want on a pretty short par three. Nate throwing something saucy here, flipping over a little bit. He's a little long. Yeah, Nate showing off some of his power. And Tom, with his sidearm just a little high on that, high right. Yeah, this, this hole is starting to show, even though it's a pretty straightforward open shot, it does have some intricacies because of the elevation. And one of the things that we've talked about doing, uh, this was Cody Wingett's idea, was actually potentially turning this basket into an elevated pin, uh, building, oh. a pe building a pedestal out of some brick that would match the buildings on campus to just add another level of intricacy, uh, especially on a pretty open, windy uh, hillside. It looked beautiful out there in the field, too. People would be driving by seeing it, being like, hey, is that that disc golf stuff? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, and Mitch, again, just a hair low. Are you trying to get my birdie? But like I said, down the hill a little too far. Now, can Vinny go three for three? Can he get this birdie? Oh, just not a little quite right. Almost the first turkey at Seton Hill, but uh, <laughs> Hunter with his nice little floaty Annie putt. And Nate gonna have to fight those chains. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, those new, uh, those new old AVRs that he's putting with. <laughs> I believe that's a birdie for him, right? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Mitch, making sure it sticks with the chains leaning like that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> some of these leaning baskets definitely added a a level of intricacy <laughs> on your putts that will hopefully be gone when we, you know, correctly install permanent baskets. Oh, Tom, going left, no chains. Yeah, the Steph Curry putt, nothing but, <laughs> nothing but cage. What I love about this is that you get from here, you get a great shot of the city at Greensburg downtown as we move on to hole four, and it's par three. It's three hundred and thirty-nine feet. Yeah, this is another um, pretty big shot. You're throwing uphill initially, but just slightly the basket is turning over to the um, left or sorry to the right but uh, if you throw the righty backhand like Nate's about doing you don't get it turned you can easily start running down that hill and it is a nice wide open shot but right now with the grass being a little higher it adds this uh, level of difficulty where you can't really get a great run up so you know that's that's something that I think would be dealt with whenever the course would go up. Yeah. And actually with, um, if we get these fairways mowed down, this, this shot's going to turn into a uh, much bigger, probably closer to 500 foot par four. Um, you can see, I don't quite get this turned and I'm headed down the hill. Uh, but when we look at this video where you're going to see the pin placement actually sitting, we're probably going to talk about moving that pin farther up, and to the right and kind of really tucking it up there to make it a tight um, second shot on a par four. Yeah, I definitely had that nice challenge to it. Hunter just a little low with his forehand. And Chris trying out the sidearm, I think you showed him, and has a great shot. That was further than I've seen him throw. Up until that point today. Yeah, we switched him. Uh, he said he played quarterback, and he was trying to figure out how to get his hips involved. So we said, try this. Gave him a forehand grip. And uh, all of a sudden, he just started smashing some flex forehands. It was a little hit or miss. But when he uh, when he hit him right, uh, he was probably throwing at almost 350. And Mitch within Mitch putting range. Second shot. 
Tom trying to see the basket. We're already getting late in the day here. So this is for Nate's too. He got some great distance on that, but just not close enough. Yeah, the initial mapping that we had on UDISC has this at 339, but I don't know how true that is. I know that we actually played a different tee pad probably farther down the hill or a different spot. We don't really have a tee pad yet. And then if we tuck that basket up, like I said, this will probably play much closer to 550, 600 feet as a par four instead of a par three. Yeah, I do believe you're correct. This is much longer than that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We were taking some full rips off the tee. And um, when we mapped this out originally, we, we played a tee pad that was higher up the hill, but it ended up being a very similar shot to hole three. So we moved down the hill and let people crush. Now there's, this is a hole that I absolutely love. Hole five, par three, 265 feet. You gotta play under these trees, but also over the OB uh, ditch here. Yeah, and we're about a week too late to get that little skinny tree right in the middle, uh, just over Nate's left shoulder there. Uh, when it was full of foliage, just a week or two prior, this hole was beautiful. Uh, I would consider it potentially one of the signature holes of this course, both just because of the visual and the fact that uh, it plays under the trees, but with the OB Creek inside the circle. And you're gonna see a lot of these shots flirt with that OB. Ooh, right in the drainage ditch. Actually, I think he might have rolled just out of it. Yeah, he got the worst case scenario to roll down the hill, then go OB. I'm just throwing a Casey Pro Rock on a nice hyzer. Just trying That's, to float it. Oh. And I do believe I hopped the creek. I think he did too. So I'm basically parked with that shot. I think Mitch is going to try and follow my line here. Yeah, if you throw that right hand, you can let it sort of sail down and maybe get that skip across. Yeah. He's going to catch the tree, and he's going to... Oh, I think he's going to roll down there. He's close. And Tom, Tom big forehand, he's just nipping those tree branches. <laughs> and get the craziest <laughs> roll through the OB. <laughs> Now, the first time Hunter and I played together, he uh, he started smashing these forehands, uh, and it was just shockingly far, well over 400 feet. So we're getting to see him do a little more of a touch forehand here. And then, yeah, for a kicker to have that great of a forehand, you know, what does that say? I don't know. <laughs> oh, look at that! Now he's getting his first birdie look of the day. Yeah. Nate, giving that a good run, unfortunately going to be a little low on the basket. Let's see if Tom can make that birdie. No, unfortunately not. Chris, do it. Oh, a little low. You just, I think he was just laying up there. Vinny, oh, hitting metal. Hunter going deep, having the putt back at the OB. Taking a kneeling putt. <laughs> and that was one of the features that we liked with this uh, pin position uh, when, when Cody first eyed this one up was the fact that you do have that low ceiling right around the basket uh, because of the trees. So it adds a variable for sure. I believe we ruled that Mitch was inbounds, in fact. So he took a nice two. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my two. The chains were leaning so far to the left. <laughs> and everybody cleaning up. Hunter showing our crew where 
the next baskets need to go, but. And hole six is a great hole. I love it. It's a par four. It's over 400 feet, way over 400 feet, honestly. Uh, as you play around, you kind of like follow the road here. And the, the I think the basket's either going to be here or near that tree, right? Yeah, the, the idea was to have it sitting uh, just on the edge of the hill over there. Uh, with this manicured lawn, we're playing the rough down the left side as an OB line. And uh, this is definitely one of the signature holes for the course. Now, I'm trying to throw a roller here to get this down, uh, push away from that OB on the left and get the corner. But I caught that the rocks in that drainage ditch and just sputtered out. I'm still down near the corner, which is critical for your second shot. Mitch is throwing a nice placement turnover. And the trick with this hole is the trees lining the road, which is OB on the right, uh, the branches hang out pretty low and very far. So it creates a challenging second shot if you're up on the right side of the fairway at all. So you really want to push as straight and down to the left as possible if you're throwing an air shot, but you still have to challenge that OB. Or you can throw a huge roller here like Nate did and try and curl the corner. Now, Tom and Hunter are going to show off the uh, the power forehand line. If you can push a forehand far enough to get this corner, which is about 420 to 450 feet to clear the trees, essentially. Wow. Holy cow. Tom went full flex on that. And Hunter playing just that's a, really nice. Just a little high. I think he wanted to keep that a little lower and really push some distance on it. And take a good look at this disc. It's the last time we're going to see it. Because Vinny tried to go for the big shot and he flips <laughs> this destroyer over. So he has a disc somewhere over there. I don't think we've discovered it yet. No, it's probably still sitting over Somewhere in the OB, we looked for a while and we couldn't find it. And throwing probably his first 350 foot shot here with that big flex forehand. Great shot. Now you're going to start to see these second shots trying to get around this corner. You either have to go under the trees or go wide and around them to a basket that will be sitting just on the edge of a slope. So it's a tricky second shot. It's not particularly long, maybe 200 to 250 feet, but it's all about hitting the right spot so that you don't catch a roll away or have a long putt at a, uh, a drop off. We'll leave that one alone. That wasn't Mitch's finest moment. <laughs> <laughs> and Hunter's going to have a good up there. Mm -hmm. Throwing his zones. Hunter throws a lot of disc craft. Nate with his forehand. It'll be high there. I'll have to put down at the basket, which I actually prefer it whenever it's like that. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Start recording. So this is Vinny's third shot, giving him his spot yep. from the OB. Yeah, this is where we last spotted his disc, so that's where he'll have to play it from. Yeah, going back to his. It's a little tough to follow some of these. We were mob golfing on camera. I'm sure filming that was a dream for you. It was interesting. You know, we're not keeping scores, so that makes things a lot easier for me. But, uh, you know, we, we, we had a lot of fun out there still. I, I'm absolutely loving the layout of this new course. It, it seems to, it's not like too, too rough on your knees or anything like that. It's the, with the hills that we're used to, you know, it's completely different than, than the hills here. Yeah, there's no monstrous hills. There's a couple on the back nine, but um, most of the elevation is fairly gradual. Uh, it adds an, just enough of a variable to the course, but it's not the defining feature of it. Mitch taking a little bit of a dive down that hill. Nate, you're going to have to make this. Yes. Nate hits his. 
And that's a little bit of a preview or, you know, shows sort of the risk reward of running this putt. Uh, if you're, if you are short or to the right of the basket, because that's exactly what can happen right there. I think the etiquette kind of got away from them in there as Tom's disc, he was putting whenever Chris was putting, he's going to roll into the OB down the hill. So a uh, huge roll away there for Tom. Yeah, there was no etiquette in our mob. <laughs> And, you know, for those who are new to disc golf, who are just seeing this because maybe uh, you're attending Seton Hill, um, you know, this is a great sport for anybody. I mean, men, women, children, anybody who would want to play, uh, this is this is a sport for everybody. Absolutely. Um, one of the design features of this course is the fact that not only are we going to have an 18-hole championship course, but also a uh, nine hole starter, like beginner friendly course. And hole seven it plays down the hill past this tree. It's a par three, it's 295 feet. Kind of plays out into this field. We, I think we like it a little bit further down more yeah. towards the OB. Yeah, we our basket placement here is a little short of where we'd like it. Again, because of the manicured grass, we would play the rough line as OB. So we'd like to push that basket down the probably about 30 feet from the rough to bring in that risk reward of how much do you want to run, uh, run the basket off the tee. There's one big tree in the center of the fairway. So it's pretty straightforward. You're either going, uh, hyzer to the right or hyzer to the left with a forehand or in Vinny's case his backhand. So Vinny's, it was funny about Vinny is that he can overshoot it without even thinking. <laughs> Right. The thing is, if the basket was where we wanted it to be, Vinny's probably parked. I just uh, babied a zone here, so I'm going to be about 40 feet short. I'm starting to get some distance on that forehand. Tom basically parking it. And it's cool to see some of these guys electing to use the forehand option, uh, even though it's a pretty straightforward backhand. So I'm just going to run that down. <laughs> nice 45 foot downhill putt. Probably the best one I had all day. And Vinny tried to ring up his two there. And Nate's a victim of the soft-sided baskets. Yeah, because we want to push it back close to that OB line. So it is like, do you want to run it or do you... So is Mitch. And there is a technique to it. A lot of people aren't aware of this um, you're starting out, but your putting technique is very important. Absolutely. It's, you know, a lot of beginners, their initial instinct is to learn how to throw far fast. And uh, everyone wants to, you know, have the big crushing backhand. But the reality of it is to get good at disc golf, you have to learn how to putt. That's where you're going to take the most strokes off your game initially. And hole eight is a par four. It is 849 feet. It plays off the top of this hill, down into this wooded area where you kind of have to uh, kind of come around the corner here where the basket is near uh, the stream down there where we play that as OB. So you got to be very careful. Yeah, and that rough on the right side is no joke. This is probably my favorite hole in the course. Um, just It brings a lot of variables in. I'm just playing a fairly safe destroyer hyzer down the hill, trying to set myself up for a second shot. So I'm just trying to hit the mouth of that uh, gap. Hunter saws his off. He's going to be high and to the left. 
Palm showing us how to play that sidearm. Of course, it just doesn't come out of it. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's not a bad spot to be over there to the left. It sets you up to be able to attack um, up that tunnel. And, of course, this is Vinny smashing his shot. And it's absolutely crushed coming down <laughs> behind <laughs> where the guys are there with the camera. Yeah, our catch cam crew lost sight of that one uh, until it hit the trees right next to them. So this is what this hole can do sometimes. It can kind of bait you to go for the big distance shot. And we just found, we have found throwing some of these shots a few times now that uh, if, if you get something turning going down this hill, you are more than likely going into the rough on the right side. Yeah, and we'll see Chris here. Oh, he's going to be going into that rough. That's definitely not where you want to be, especially on a new course. <laughs> no. I'm lining up. If I if you hit this landing zone, it does set up. You can take a big hyzer up over the trees and kind of give yourself a look at your three. I'm a little short and left. Probably the closest to this position I've been is with a flexing fairway driver, uh, like nine-speed driver. But the over-the-top play is probably the higher percentage shot. Nate loves doing that. He loves making you think he's going to throw straight down a gap, and then he throws around the gap and down the street from the gap. That sounds about right for him. <laughs> Vinny getting to his drive here. Amazing. Playing a roller, it looks like. Coming over. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is vintage Vinny's scramble that just – leaves you sort of shaking your head and wondering how that actually worked. But he's going to find himself awfully close to our basket. Now you can see in all the, well, you can't see it, but in all those trees behind Nate running up there, there is a creek that is back there. So not only is it rough, but there is an OB creek. Um, that does come into play on your approach to this pin. An errant upshot or um, putt can potentially find its way to that creek. Oh, and Tom's sneaking one in there. And for your birdie. Yeah, just a bit right. Hunter even giving that a good float. And Vinny for his birdie. Wow. Yeah, that's the fact that he went standstill, patent pending, falling over roller. <laughs> it was easily the closest of anybody. Like I said, vintage scramble Vinny. And poor Mitch, just a little high that time. <laughs> he, can't, he can't seem to, you know, <laughs> adapt, unfortunately. With the way that the baskets are leaning and such. That's tapping in my four. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the last hole in this video. The front nine. It's hole nine. It's par three. It's 309 feet. Plays through that tight gap up through the woods. Uh, I should say up through the hill here where the basket Ways. Yeah, throwing out of the trees here really sort of forces your angle. Um, you can't just take big wide shots at it. Uh, you do have to throw something that's got a little flex. And it's, again, another hole that plays far more uphill than the camera gives it uh, gives you the perspective of. So uh, you're going to see a lot of the righty backhands throwing very flat, almost flexing shots or throwing understable discs to get this kind of turn, just like Nate's doing. Um, to get that little bit of extra distance on the uphill. It'll be an exciting day when we actually have tee pads out here <laughs> instead of 
so you can see me fighting yeah. some of the bramble. And this is the risk of throwing that understable disc. I just overturned that destroyer, and uh, I'm going to be playing for my three. And Hunter going to have a pretty good shot up here as well. Mm -hmm. Just a little short. Was waiting all day for uh, Hunter. Just played a very safe, consistent Heiser forehand game pretty much this entire round. I was really waiting for him to show off his big uh, cannon forehand that he uh, surprised me with the first time we ever played around together. Oh, and grabbing a great putt there. Was I believe Mitch, right? That was Mitch, yeah, from yeah. good fifty. Nate. Nate with the two. Great two. So that's gonna do it for the front nine of the Seton Hill course. Of course, the course is not uh together yet, as we were saying. It's just something we wanted to test out the way that things were going to play and you know bring some guys who are used to playing out to the course so we want to thank uh, everybody who came out as well as the guys from the Seton Hill football team and uh, Hunter for kind of getting us together and out there also we want to thank Seton Hill for the opportunity of having a disc golf course in Greensburg uh, I know that we're all really excited for it so anything else you'd like to say before we go Andrew no that's uh just uh, excited to uh, get the feedback from the players and people as they start to see what this layout looks like. And uh, now let's see what the back nine has in store. Absolutely. So we'll see you on the back nine. Go ahead and click the link. It should be in the description and or on your screen. So until then, keep banging those chains.